Joining us now in studio, you know her. She's going to return to the cage at Bellator 184, which will be February 16th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut, when she takes on, I can never pronounce her name properly, Anna Julaton, the one and only Heather Hardy. Heather, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming in on time. Couldn't believe it. (laughs) We were all saying when we, when we call journalists to be on the show, like they pick up by the second ring. Fighters, you got to call like seven or eight times typically, but you're here yeah. like it's nothing. Josh has to text me a bunch because he knows I forget stuff, but I come on time. <laughs> Do you live in Manhattan? Uh, no, I live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, represent. Yeah. What, oh, let me see if I can guess the neighborhood. How long have you lived there? Well, I'm not really like the person that li- comes. I come from someplace else in Brooklyn. Okay, so I'm going to say Williamsburg? No. I'm going to say... Park Slope? No. I'm going to... Not Bensonhurst. No. Uh, you ain't never going to guess. Not Red Hook? Nope. Where are you from? Garrison Beach. Oh, really? Yeah. Far out there. I'm a beach rat. <laughs> That's great. But not, not these days, you're not. <laughs> what, how, how, what, at what time of year is like the beach good in Brooklyn? Um, Like never is the good beach good in Brooklyn. The weather for the beach <laughs> is nice I mean. in the summer, but I wouldn't go to the beach in Brooklyn. <laughs> no, what's your beach of choice in the area? Um, Probably Rockaway Beach. I've not been to Rockaway Beach. It's pretty nice over there. I went to school in Rockaway. so That's right. You went to John Jay, right? I went to John Jay College, yeah. I had an old job when I used to live in the city back in the day. I took some classes at John Jay. Exactly. Over on the west side, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, took some classes out there. Got some permits. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, right. welcome. Thanks for having me. How are me. you doing these days? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah? How do you feel about that last fight? Uh, well... I know it sucks to talk about it, but It doesn't you suck are. to talk about it at no? all. I think, like, a lot of people think, like, I'm super sensitive about it because it was, like, my first professional loss. Like, oh my God, she doesn't want to talk about it. But it's like, I've dealt with loss so many times in my life. It wasn't the first fight I ever lost. Like, I've lost tons of fights in the amateurs. So, it was just another thing. It was a learning experience. How's your nose? I still am cute, right? You look great, is what I can professionally say (laughs) without losing my job. Yeah. (laughs) It still look all right. Yeah, I didn't even notice anything. It's okay? Yeah, it's fine. That kick looked like something something else. It sure was. Yeah. But it didn't... You didn't look rocked. Well, I think I have like a really high tolerance for pain. You must. You know, because everyone's like, oh my God, you're going to go back after that? And I'm like, well, it didn't really hurt, which is probably really hard to believe. Like, and I'm not being tough. Like after I had my daughter, they gave me two Tylenol and I was like up walking around. Are you kidding? So I think like I have like an abnormal. Wait, after the kick or after the daughter? After my daughter. Like, wow. I didn't have painkillers for the kick at all. Like my nose was broke and it was more like. Just the blood, right? Yeah. Literally, you couldn't see for a time. I couldn't. I yeah. was like spitting bone out of my mouth. It was like awful. <laughs> CNN, you're that tough, right? <laughs> we call him CNN. Not by a long shot. Because he gives a lot of fake news. Got it. Uh, okay, but w- what would you say the biggest learning experience was in that one? Don't duck into a kick, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stop yeah. getting kicked in the face. No, probably... Uh, in all honesty, that everything I do in boxing doesn't translate. And I think my approach to MMA prior to going into this match was, let's figure out a way to turn it into boxing for every situation, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, boxing is my strong point. Let's try to make boxing be the focal point of every fight. And that was the wrong approach. Like, boxing was not working no matter how hard I tried in my last fight. And I didn't really have any other tools in the toolbox to pull out. It was like, oh my God, guys, now what do I do? (laughs) Because the other stuff isn't working. So, you know, I kind of changed... You have to change your mind before you can change your body. So w- once that switched. Also, your opponent surprised me. We had her on the show, not a very talkative person. Mm-hmm. And I know this sounds crazy, but usually the fighters that I've ever interviewed, and I've been doing this almost 15 years at this point, usually, not always, the ones who are really chatty and good at talking mm-hmm. have like a high level of technique. Yeah. Think like a Dominic Cruz or something. She had nothing to say, but I thought she was, she looked like a decent Technician, I was. I, I. I don't know. For some reason, the fact she didn't say anything, I thought she would just go in there and slug it out with no aim or direction at all. Right. And that wasn't the case. And I realize this sounds insane, but that's sort of what I was. Thinking. It, it doesn't. But like, I'm really articulate with how I speak. But I'm all over the place on a fight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not the prettiest fighter, the strongest fighter, the most technical fighter. But I am always going to be the toughest fighter. Always. I, I have and, no doubt about that. Anna is the other way around. So we're going to have to test her chin and see how tough she is. But um, she is a, a, quite a technician, especially when, when it comes to boxing anyway. Let's set this up. Now, how do you pronounce her last name? I, I don't know. It's not my last name, so I don't care. I, <laughs> 
<laughs> I get it wrong all the time, I'm sure. I'm going to say Juliton. That's okay. what I'm just going to say. Go for it. You're taking on Anna Juliton. It's mm-hmm. going to be a flyweight fight, 125 pounds. No yeah. issues making flyweight, right? right? Right. What are you trying to say? No, no, I'm just... You know how many <laughs> fighters have weight issues these days? I'm only kidding. Uh, so you're going to be taking on her in an MMA contest. And again, it's going to be February 16th, live on Paramount Network, which yeah. I have to say now, at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Then... And this is how I understand it. At a later date, yet to be determined, it'll be a boxing contest. That's right. All right, so a couple of questions about that. Number one, what weight class is that going to be in? 126. Okay. Because I couldn't make 122 unless somebody chopped off a leg. So it's going to have to be 126. Fair enough. <laughs> now, I'm told that Lou DiBella is going to promote that? Well, I think that Anna has a boxing promoter as well, so it'll have to be b- cross-promoted. Like, the two guys will have to come to agreement on when the shows are going to be and stuff. So how did this come to pass? I mean, obviously, everyone knows you guys have a back- boxing background, but who had the idea to be like, you know what? Let's see if we can do a crisscross on this. Well, I have to have all my MMA bouts approved by my boxing promoter and vice versa because we're in a contractual agreement that we'll all agree on what's best for me is what we're going to do. So I think that just during the talks of, hey, we want to do this MMA fight, it just made sense, you know, since Lou was involved and her boxing promoter had to be involved, that a boxing match would come after it so that everybody kind of wins. Because I don't think it's ever really been done before, right? Like maybe two of the same it's, people. Yeah, maybe it's happened people. on a very low level somewhere yeah. that I didn't know. But in terms of fighters competing on national television, sure. I, I can't think of one. Okay, of course, unless Mayweather. Uh, do, do, do you think he'll fight in the octagon? I mean, so here's what my point about this: I have no desire to see it because uh, he's going to get fucking walloped. I if know he does. it's going to be it's, it's going to be painful to watch, kind of like my last fight. <laughs> No, because you have actually fought MMA before. Yeah, it's You've true, trained true. MMA before, and you're not 40. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I have no desire to see it. People are like, you don't want to see Floyd get his ass kicked? Well, uh, maybe on World Star Hip Hop or something. Yeah. But I don't want to see Connor. I mean, it's, it's a, a commission shouldn't sanction that fight, straight up. No? I don't know. I, th- I think it's, it's kind of scary sounding. I feel, I feel, I would. It, I, I don't know what scenarios exist in real life where I would feel bad for Floyd. I know. This that might, might be, be one, one of them. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Very true. Very true. Heather Hardy here joins us in the studio. Uh, by the way, what did you make of what happened in that fight? What one? Uh, the first, well, the boxing match. Well, because we saw you in Las Vegas prior yeah. uh, to the fight. And uh, I think your prediction was largely correct. But the thing that interested me was the first three rounds, Floyd didn't really engage much. You asked the MMA side, oh, he didn't want a piece of Connor. You asked the boxing side, Floyd took it off. I think it's probably somewhere in between. I think it certainly is. I think that he was um, being a little bit cautious because that's what we're trained to do as boxers. Be patient. Read your opponent. Feel what they're going to do. You know, Floyd in his whole career wasn't a go out and attack kind of fighter. So as much as you saw in the later rounds him really press the action and be present where normally he would just be like relaxing and moving around, I think it might have taken him a round or two to press the action, to feel confident, to force it. And I talked about this with Paulie Malinaji. I was, my hairdresser's calling me. Look at that. I was uh, I was talking to Paulie Malinaji. I know, I have a hairdresser. Fuck you all. Yes, I do. <laughs> he gets $75 haircuts. He's not so lying because I'm looking at his phone. It's totally his hairdresser. <laughs> Takes it very, very. Do you pay $75 for your hair? No, one of my friends does it. Thank you. How much does she charge? Nothing. No, 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 not you in general. I don't know. Oh, she's wait. She's not a hairdresser. She is a hairdresser, but I don't. She never charged me, so I wouldn't even know. Okay, well, let me explain what I get for this. First of all, she moved away. I don't know why she's calling me. She moved away. <laughs> number one. Number one. Number two. Here's the big deal about this. For seventy five dollars, what I get is she comes to the house. That's a big deal. Cuts my hair whenever I like. Oh, hey, can you come over Tuesday at eleven? Boom, she cuts it and then leaves, and that's a all inclusive fee. I don't feel like that's a lot of money. You have short hair, though, Heather. Seventy five dollars is it really necessary? I mean, my brother cuts his own hair. With what? I don't know. I never asked him, but I don't know. He wouldn't be paying no $75. How good does the haircut look? <laughs> He's all right. It's fine. Can I see a picture, please? He gets by, I suppose. <laughs> Verify this. Yeah. By the way, Anna had a bit of a rough Bellator debut. Mm-hmm. What did, I'm sure you've seen it. What did you make of it? Um, not, rough is not quite the right word. It just didn't go her way. No. Um... It's hard for me to say because, like, you can be like really speculative looking from the outside in. Um, it kind of looked to me like she was a little bit hesitant. I don't know if it was because maybe the other girl was hitting her too hard and she was trying to stay on this side of being cautious, but um, I didn't think she pressed the action. Either of the girls really didn't. I mean, I, I thought the fight could have went either way at the end of it. 
Uh, pro- it was a split decision. Yes, yeah. it was a split decision. It was kind of close. There wasn't like a lot of action, action, if I remember right. Do you anticipate at all that she might try to take this to the ground? And here's why I asked that. Let's say you're starting to piece her up a little bit. You land yeah. something big. Uh, do you think she might? Um, I'm prepared for it. I'm a hell of a lot more prepared for this fight than I was going into the last one. I know that she released a statement say like, oh, you know, nobody can come back from that kind of loss without going into the cage and feeling a little hesitant we all saw what happened to her face and she in for a surprise (laughs) oh is that right how has your training changed since the last contest well i've gotten a little a lot more technical training um like more uh brain training if that makes sense you know like my my, uh like uh, people teaching me how to do things and why things are done so instead of doing like a 60 minute session of like sweat work and drill work like some days i go to the gym and my coach will just talk to me for an hour and explain to me like how certain things work and why certain things happen and it's been so useful to me because well, I only took the MMA fight, you know, because they offered me the fight in the garden. Mm-hmm. They could have offered me a sword fight there and I would have done it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything about MMA, but I tried it. I was kind of like on the job training, right? Like I was learning how to do it, knowing I had these fights coming. And I always approached it like just survive until you can hit them, right? Like just survive all the bad stuff and eventually you'll hit the girls and you'll win because you're a better striker. And that's not the right approach. Like now I'm going into the cage actually with strategy. Like I'm not just thinking, I can't wait to punch you in the face. Like there are lots of stuff I know how to do now and you know, how to adjust, how to make changes. I'm really excited to go out and show everybody. Favorite new tool. That's a secret. I'll tell you on October 17th. (laughs) October 17th. Isn't that oh, what? February? Yeah. I mean, do, do you know when your fight I'm is? I'm tired. <laughs> Have you trained already today? Yeah, I can, I can tell. And I got one more. After this? Yeah. Doing two a days? Yeah, three a days. Three a days? Mm-hmm. Oh, give me the times of the three a days. So I'm in the gym starting at like six, doing a little bit of boxing and, and kickboxing. And then midday, I'm working strictly with my MMA coach and my wrestling, jujitsu, and MMA training partners sometimes doing a muay thai session right after that and then in the evening i kind of do my get your fat ass down to 125 right session you move around <laughs> to keep the weight down yeah the workout. but yeah. it's light on the body in terms of like yeah impact. it's not intense like it's just like cardio a cardio session and the sweat session that sounds that's a lot of work yeah around work and media and a 13 year old how much uh, water weight do you cut at the end i want to say maybe like f- anywhere between four and five pounds that's not insignificant given your size. No, no, but I can do it in one training session. So usually, like on when, like if my weigh-in is Thursday morning, like Wednesday afternoon, I'll do my last like big workout, hit probably one twenty-seven, and then the last one will like float down to like one twenty-five and a half. You know, there's a big issue and a big debate going on in MMA right now, where we're sort of trying to wrap our heads around why there are so many injuries, and I'm sure a lot of that is just because. Guys don't have best practices in terms of how to train appropriately. Mm -hmm. But my other thought is sometimes you see big boxing fights fall out, but not nearly as much. And it can't be because they're not training hard because they are. So what is it about MMA? Do you think that it just carries a naturally higher injury load than boxing? Well, you're doing training. You're doing a lot more stuff like in boxing. Some of the common injuries in boxing, right? Like. I can't even think of them. Sometimes you get like a tear in your rotator cuff from punching too much or you might pull something in your back. In MMA, you have to worry about all the shit happening with jujitsu and your wrists and your elbows and your shoulders and like accidents happen all the time. Like people go, oops, you know, didn't see a tap and, and things like that. Like an accidental kick to the chin or... You know, there's so much more to happen. Last week, two guys left my gym sparring, accidental knee kicks in the face and stitches over their eyebrows. So I just think you're exposed to so many more disciplines that anything can happen any day. Doesn't phase you. No. I know that. Not really. I need two Tylenol and a glass of water. You know what? Forget the water. I just need the Tylenol. (laughs) I got kids to birth. Yeah. That's incredible. I never heard a story like that in my life. All the women I talked to was like, give me the epidural. I don't want to be awake for it or, you know, whatever the case. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I can't wait. It's going to be February 16th. 
at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut, live on Paramount Network. This will be on the main card. Heather Hardy taking on Anna Juliton in an MMA fight. Any sense of a timeline when the boxing fight is going to be? It's super hard to say because, like, what happens if, like, I break her arm or something and then we can't fight until next right. year, right? Like, uh, if we had a date, you know, and my promoter would be like, don't you break her fucking arm. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. So they can't really set that up. Anything can happen in an MMA fight, like you just said. So um, sure, we'll see what happens uh, next Friday and let the promoters decide when is best. And where's that going to air? Do you know? Uh, the boxing match? Yeah. I, we haven't even discussed where it'll take place. Yeah, you got to get through this one first. Yeah. So the mixed martial arts side of things will happen at Bellator 194 on the main card. Heather Hardy versus Anna Juliton. Part one, the MMA side of things. It'll be on the Paramount Network. Uh, that should kick off around 9 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, Heather, best of luck to you. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks so much for having Can't me. Can't wait to see the MMA and the boxing side of things. Yeah.